Been a while, right? But uh, we finally here with the first, well, technically, is it first? Let's call it a first part of the laser cutter restoration, which you can see right now. So in this part, I'm going to focus on the strip down challenges and painting of this enclosure box. And in the next part, we're going to tackle the gantry itself. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. If you're interested in how and why I've acquired this big laser cutter, then uh, in here you're going to find a video about uh, details of this purchase. But uh, right now, uh, let's uh, talk about stripping down. So I promised myself that I'm going to spend an hour each day stripping it down and fixing up. So this is the first hour and uh, I guess let's start it. Now, this laser cutter was um, unfortunately damaged, uh, probably by coolant leak, and it had a lot of rusted areas at the bottom of the enclosure. I definitely knew I want to fix this. I wasn't sure how wild I'm gonna get with my paint job and uh, what I'm going to do with it, but I knew I wanted to fix this. I already knew that most of the components on the laser cutter was, well, working because we used it in the past, but the tube, the CO2 laser tube, wasn't great and really needed a replacement. So that's another thing to tackle. So after short Googling, I found this exact model of laser cutter on the website Vevor and some spare components. And to my surprise, they actually reached out to me asking to help me out with uh, the restoration of this laser cutter and bringing it to its former glory, which is great because we're gonna be also upgrading this. So if you are looking to spruce up your workshop or to restore a laser cutter or maybe even buy your own or buy the replacement parts then do check it out vevo.co.uk or vevo.com if you're in the US and well they have a lot of different industrial machines and you'll definitely be able to uh, add a bit of industrial look to your home garage like myself. This trip down wasn't particularly hard, however, there were two things I would do differently if I was doing it again. I managed to strip down the machine with a very modest tool set. In fact, I was using my Vera uh, Tool Check Plus set. Check it out in there, it's really handy for jobs like that, and some pliers, and that's pretty much was all. And for the most part, I just followed the principle of finding an next bit to unscrew, removing the screws, and uh, putting in a separate tray for each kind of section of the components so I would know where nuts and bolts are going back on. Before I actually disassembled the entire machine I also took some reference photos and videos just in case I get stuck with reassembly. Now I've mentioned I would do two things differently. Well first part I've discovered that at the back of this machine there is additional uh, section that you can remove. It's a small panel with four screws. Once you remove it it'll give you a uh, full access to the gantry and since the gantry is only mounted with four not so easily access accessible screws uh, once you are able to access them you can just simply remove them and pull out the gantry as one piece, which is great because in my next video I'm going to focus on rebuilding the gantry and I'll be able to do it on the workbench, work it to 100% and then just simply slot it back in into the enclosure. But before, before this happens actually I have to clean it up because I don't know why but this laser cutter smells of weed. And I don't think anyone was cutting weed with it but uh, it has this smell I cannot identify and I can't really get rid of. So one of the reasons I wanted to restore it and repaint it and clean it is, well, basically was that. The second part I would change was actually my hesitation to cut the wires. I already knew I was going to put some connectors to ease the maintenance next time. So as soon as I realized that the entire gantry can be shoved out of the enclosure, uh, I should have just cut the wires straight away and those were the wires that will need some nice connectors. I know that I'm going to rewire most of it anyway, so it was just holding me back. I should have cut the wire straight away and that would allow me to move the gantries out from the box instantly 
and just deal with whatever left. The entire strip down took me about two to three hours of my hard work and honestly I think you could even do it quicker if you don't focus on filming these elements for your future video. So that was quite nice and entertaining and I've learned quite a bit about how the machine is put together. Right, it's getting dark so I think I should wrap up for today. Uh, anyway, most of it is uh, already cleaned and uh, probably some wire brushing is still needed to get rid of the paint. Uh, but the enclosure is ready for uh, sanding down and uh, painting so are uh, all the panels. So that's my next step and that's going to be messy so I need to find myself a spot outside to do it. But I'm super excited. The question is can I lift it? Yeah, shouldn't be a problem so I'll be able to reposition it. Probably going to do it in stages and see how it goes. Also, once I've disassembled it, I've noticed the uh, parts of the machine that have been damaged by coolant leak and this is something I needed to focus on and fix because no one likes rusty tools. Now I know that uh, the best way to actually do it is either to give this enclosure a chemical bath or take it to a sandblaster and remove the paint completely to a bare metal but, but let's face it, this is a huge enclosure and that would be quite pricey and it's outside of the realm of what I can do right now. So I had to settle for the next best thing, elbow grease. So I've treated myself to a handheld uh, sander from Bosch. Right, today we are sanding things down and I actually don't know how messy it's going to get and how loud it's going to be, whether it's going to do a good job. I have a couple of panels and we're going to start with something Oh, probably that is gonna be at the back, just to figure out if I'm doing it right. Then we're gonna prime things and start painting. To provide semi-smooth surface to actually do something with it. My plan was to prime it and then sand it out again to get rid of those uh, marked areas where the paint was completely gone. Obviously I wasn't stripping entire paint down because it would be very time consuming process this way. Okay, priming is done and it's nice and red actually. Yeah, apart from the fact that all the imperfections and all the paint leftovers are actually very visible right now, I think the red looks cool. There are some parts that I will paint and some parts that I will simply keep probably uh, with the primer. What I'm going to do is so wait for it to dry, uh, resand it to smooth it out and then spray paint it. So the paintwork is less than stellar. Uh, I did cover most of it with a primer but uh, well during the sanding not everything can be removed unfortunately and this is something I'll have to work around. So what I settled for is a car uh, filler which I'm tr gonna try to use on affected areas and bring it to kind of one surface, sand it down and then uh, paint it. I don't know if another primer is gonna be required, but that's, that's something I'm gonna experiment with. Because I'm not bothered with areas that are not visible, because A, they're not visible. Just wanted to fix the water damage and make sure the machine is relatively clean and nice to use. So that's the plan. So uh, let's give it a go and see what that can do. But first, <laughs> I'm gonna need to read some instructions. It was the first time I was using it, so I wasn't exactly sure what I'm doing, but it turns out okay. It's not perfect and uh, my advice is work quickly and make small doses because this thing is only workable for about five minutes after you mix it and that's all your working time before it starts to set and uh, has the consistency that ruins your work. So I filled most of the annoying gaps. Not everything is perfect and you can see some imperfections here and there, but it's, well, it's good enough finally to be painted. The 
if you remember yesterday we've done some paint tests uh, just to see what's the coverage like and uh, yeah uh, I think I should go with the primer especially in the white parts I'm like this is blue on blue it's gonna be looking good but the yellow it's gonna show the texture of the previous paint and I don't really want to show that on the yellow part so uh, yeah we're gonna prime this sand it and then repaint it again So after some creative uh, masking with a, a masking tape using ruler and Sharpie, I kind of hand-drawn all the designs on here, on this side, and kind of overflowing on the side. So uh, it would provide more interesting look to the machine itself. And I think the result is actually pretty good. It's gonna be one of a kind laser cutter, that's for sure. I'm almost ready to move to the next stage. Why almost? Well, I realized that I'll have to paint this side as well because after all, that's gonna be a lifted arm and it will ruin the entire look. I know it's on the inside, but uh, I think this has to be done. I greatly underestimated the number of hours I would have to put in into painting this. Now, um, I've mentioned that the strip down alone took about two to three hours to complete. Now, the painting process, I would estimate for about six hours without the time taken uh, for each layer to uh, dry, so that's not accounted for. But the biggest uh, time commitment was actually working on the surfaces and trying to make them as smooth as possible. And that was a time sink. I think I've spent around 12 to 15 hours altogether to actually get the surface ready for priming and painting. And yeah, I didn't expect this to be this long and it was quite intense labor. In my next video, I'm going to focus on the gantry itself, but that's gonna be so much easier because, well, I can remove it and work it on a work table. It's gonna be easy to film, easy to describe, and most importantly, easy to fit back in because all it takes is just a gentle push, four screws, and I'm ready to move to the next section. Big thanks to Vevo for actually supplying me the parts for this laser cutter, and I'll be kind enough to provide me with an upgraded 80 watt laser tube with a power supply and a couple of bits and bobs to complete this build. If you're interested in where we're gonna take this next, then uh, you know how YouTube works, I don't have to explain you all this. But uh, follow me on any social media given down below to uh, engage in the conversation, give me any useful tips and uh, tell me what else I should really get into my garage to complete my workshop. So I hope you found it all interesting. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next video. Take care. Bye. Oh, if you wonder why I'm doing it so slow, it's because most of the panels are just kind of push-fit and held by magnets because the hinges aren't done just yet.